the Pythagorean theorem, uh, I think, is probably one of the most best known results in geometry. Um, most people see this at, at some point in their high school career, and I, I suspect that a lot of people, uh, e even into adulthood, if, if they were presented with that formula, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, uh, they, they'd still manage to dredge up a memory and remember what it is. So it, it's really kind of a neat result. It says that if we have a right triangle, and, and I want to emphasize this is only true in a right triangle, not just any triangle. And we know the lengths of the legs, that's A and B. And we know the length of the hypotenuse, that's C. Then those three numbers have to satisfy this uh, very familiar equation. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So one, one thing I do want to emphasize about this before we move on, because it, it, it's just a little syntax thing. And it, it bugs me when I, I see students say this sometimes. The Pythagorean theorem is not A squared plus B squared equals C squared. That is a part of the theorem. The Pythagorean theorem is a, is a statement about a relationship that has to exist between the lengths of the sides in a right triangle. All right, now, but before we move on, we're, we're gonna look at one problem here real quick, just as a, as a quick example before we move on to the next lecture, uh, where we'll talk about this in a little more detail. It doesn't matter which leg gets to be A and which leg gets to be B. Those two are interchangeable. The only part you're really locked in on is C. C has to be the hypotenuse of the right triangle, and the hypotenuse is always the side opposite the right angle. But I've got a quick example here just for us to see the theorem in action. Uh, I want to find the length of the missing side in this right triangle. So I'm going to call 3 A. I'm going to call 6B. And again, you, you can reverse those if you did it the other way around. That's just fine. You're going to get the same answer. Uh, then I'm, I'm going to go to the theorem. The theorem's equation says A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So let's put our numbers in. 3 squared plus 6 squared equals C squared. This is 9 plus 36, which is... 45. Right now, on this last step, right, how do we get rid of that exponent on, on the C? To do that, you're going to take the square root of both sides. The square root of C squared is just C, and the right side is the square root of 45. Now, remember, we're not quite done. We, we still need to simplify. You remember our discussion of simplifying square roots? This is the square root of 9 times 5, and I know what the square root of 9 is. That's 3. So this is 3 times the square root of 5. Now, as a math professor, that's where I would stop. That, that is a perfectly good answer. No reason to do anything else with it. If you're doing a practical problem, right? in, in that case, yes, okay, you may want to get your calculator out right, and ask it what the square root of 45 is. And if you do that, you get kind of a big, messy decimal number that's approximately 6.708. All right, so that's the Pythagorean theorem in, in a nutshell. In the next lecture, we're going to take a look at what's called the converse of the Pythagorean theorem, right? And where the Pythagorean theorem tells us if we have a right triangle, certain things have to be true. The converse is, is going to go the other way around. It's going to tell us if certain things are true, then I know I'm looking at a right triangle. So it's going to be a tool that we can use to determine if a triangle that we were given out of the blue is a right triangle or not.